Now coming to the case 3, let's see how the nature of solutions exist and the conditions we use for the general lines L1 and L2. So for the lines L1 and L2 in case of the third condition I have A1 by A2 equals B1 by B2 equals C1 by C2 and in this condition we say the lines L1 and L2 L1 and L2 are coincident for the condition this and coincident implies infinitely many solutions because one line passes through the other line infinitely many times therefore that implies there exist there are infinitely many solutions many solutions is how we get the condition from the mathematical formula a1 by a2 equals b1 by b2 equals c1 by c2 so let's see this with an example problem and just with the coincident lines we generally have say for example the lines l1 which is x plus 2y minus 13 equal to 0 is one of the line and the other line l2 is 13x plus 26y minus 169 equals 0. Now for these two lines, let's see if this condition is going to be a success. Now clearly from line L1, if I extract the coefficients, then I observe that A1 is 1, B1 is 2, and C1 is negative 13, as can be seen from each of the coefficients of the line L1. And then coming to the line L2, we have the three coefficients which are a2 is 13, b2 is 26 and c2 is negative 169. And from these two conditions of a1, b1, c1 and a2, b2, c2, let's substitute in the formula of case 3. So as I see a1 by a2 comes to be 1 over 13 and that equals b1 by b2 which is 2 over 26 and c1 by c2 which comes as negative 13 over negative 169. Now if I wanted to see if all the three constants are equal then I clearly see that the second quantity which can be simplified further by cancelling with 2, 2 ones and 2 thirteens and similarly I can further simplify this where 13 ones and 13 thirteens 169. 13 times of 13 is 169. Therefore, I clearly see here that each of the quantity reduces finally to 1 by 13, 1 by 13, and 1 by 13 after further simplifications. Now, this makes me understand that this is clearly obeying the formula A1 by A2 equals B1 by B2 equals C1 by C2. Therefore, Immediately, I have the rule that the lines L1 and L2 are coincident, which makes me understand that these two lines are coincident and therefore they have infinitely many solutions. That implies L1 and L2 are coincident. And as you can see, when they're coincident, I have there the two lines are coincident in case of this case 3, is how I get the coincident lines. So L1 and L2 are coincident, that implies infinitely many solutions exist in case of these two lines coinciding one over the other, is how I understand the case 3 connected with nature of solutions. Now let's see an example problem and find how the infinitely many solutions or unique solutions help us in connecting the linear equations or the straight lines with the nature of solutions. For example, I have a problem say which says for what values of P will the lines, the first line here is Px plus 3y minus P minus 3 is the first line I have taken 
and my second line L2 is 12x plus py minus p equal to 0 and this is equal to 0 are the two lines then the question here is that for what values of p will these two lines have infinitely many solutions is the question infinitely many solutions is the question so here we need to find the values of p for which we have infinitely many solutions now as we have seen with the case 3 this comes clearly under case 3 because if we need to have infinitely many solutions then the two lines l1 and l2 need to coincide passing one over the other which is case 3 of the session which we have recently discussed on the nature of solutions now coming to this let me identify a1 b1 c1 and a2 b2 c2 for each of the lines l1 and l2 and use the respective formula for case 3 now as i clearly see here from l1 i have three different const coefficients which are a1 equal to p and then my b1 is 3 and my c1 is negative times p minus 3 are the three different coefficients of line l1 and then a2 is 12 b2 is p and c2 is minus p are the three respective coefficients of the line l2 now for infinitely many solutions for infinitely many solutions i have the condition a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 equal to c1 by c2 is the formula for infinitely many solutions therefore let's substitute each of a1 b1 c1 and a2 b2 c2 in this respective formula and then identify the value of p which is the question so clearly i have here a1 is p so which i'm going to substitute in place of the numerator of the first fraction p by a2 which is 12 and then i have b1 by b2 which comes as 3 by p and then finally c1 by c2 which comes as minus p minus 3 by minus p so i get the value of p either by choosing the pair this or this or this or vice versa so i can choose any pair from which i can extract the value of p so here i would like to take the pair the first two fractions and then find the value of p so this being arranged as p over 12 is equal to 3 over p which on cross multiplication would lead to p square equals 12 times 3 on the cross multiplication that implies p square is 12 times of 3 which is 36 and therefore that implies p is plus or minus root 36 that is plus or minus 6 i get both the positive and negative value which leads to the solution of p square equal to 36 therefore i have p is equal to plus or minus 6 therefore in order for the two lines to be infinitely many solutions the values of p can be either 6 or minus 6 therefore i conclude the statement saying that depending on the question asked therefore for p equal to 6 and p equal to minus 6 the lines l1 and l2 which are given out here are will have infinitely many solutions is how we conclude the given problem so this kind of example problems can be used for any case where if my question is for what values of p will the lines l1 and l2 have unique solution then i use the formula for the unique solution which is case one respectively and then find the value of p respectively similarly if the question says for what values of p will the lines l1 and l2 have parallel lines or have no solution then in that case when they have no solution the two lines are parallel and I use the respective condition of the case 2 
a1 by a2 equal to b1 by b2 is not equal to c1 by c2 and then finally when i simplify i get the respective value of p is how we do for the three different cases depending on the question which demands for either case 1 case 2 or case 3 is how we understand this nature of solutions connected with the formulae of each of the cases now let's see the definition of consistency and inconsistency connected with the solutions or the nature of solutions so consistent system of linear equations is what we are going to discuss in the session so what do you mean by the word consistent consistent means which has solution inconsistent means which has no solution therefore when i say consistent system of linear equations so let me take the lines l1 and l2 a1x plus b1y plus c1 equal to 0 and a2x plus b2y plus c2 equal to 0 then in this case the two lines are said to be consistent if they have solution and are said to be inconsistent if they have no solution therefore if i take the two lines the lines l1 and l2 are consistent if they have a solution a solution and the solution can be either unique or infinitely many the case one and case three so when we want to identify for the two lines to be consistent we just identify the solutions and if the solution is unique or infinitely many the case one and case three then we say the system of lines are consistent and when we identify that there is no solution for the given lines then we say that the two lines are inconsistent so that we get the note L1 and L2 are inconsistent if they have no solution. No solution inconsistent, solution consistent is how we make the learning outcome of this session. Now we'll see some word problems where the information is given in statements and we convert into the mathematical form where the word problems are connected with linear equations in two variables x and y. So let's start with this example problem which is quite interesting and this is one of the very ancient problem in, in Hindu mathematics where the Vedic mathematics where this was really a very interesting concept utilized out there. Now for example here the question says, in a garden, there are some bees and flowers. If one bee sits on each flower, then one bee is left over. And if two bees sit on each flower, then one flower is left over. The question here says, find the number of bees and number of flowers. Now, this question has only two basic conditions given out here. The condition one being that one bee sits on each flower, then one bee is left and two bees sit on each flower then there is one flower left and using these two conditions of the real life situation I need to find the number of bees and number of flowers which are existing in the garden it is quite interesting that we use mathematics to solve this puzzle so therefore let's see how we can connect this problem with linear equations in two variables x and y a real life example of linear equations so for example, I don't know the number of bees and number of flowers, so I assume them as x and y because they are unknowns which I need to find. Therefore, let number of bees in the garden be equal to some x, an unknown, and the number of flowers in the garden be y. 
in the garden is some y. So using these concepts of x bees and y flowers, let's see how my condition turns into a mathematical equation. Now if I read this statement very carefully, if one bee sits on each flower, then one bee is left. Therefore, say for example, I assume five flowers, then how many bees would be there for those five flowers? Because the statement says that if one bee sits on each flower, then there's one bee left. Therefore, if I have five flowers, there are six bees. Because five of them are already occupied on each of the flower, then there's one left. That means five plus one. Similarly, if there are 10 bees, then I think if there are 10 flowers, then definitely there are 11 bees. So every time I see that the number of bees is one more than number of flowers, which says that if there are x bees, then I have the relation that x equals y plus 1. Because the number of bees is always one more than the number of flowers, as can be seen with this condition. So this is strictly because of x bees, I have one additional b compared to the number of flowers, which is already one, y. Therefore, I have the equation x equals y plus 1. That implies I can write this as x minus y equal to 1 or x minus y minus 1 equals 0, which is equation 1. Is the first condition I have utilized here. Now, as I see the next statement, let's see how the next statement converts to the mathematical equation. Here, I have the condition stating that if two bees sit on each flower, then one flower will be left, which makes me understand that there are two bees sitting on each flower, but here one flower will be left over. That means there's no bee sitting there. So each of x is 2y 2 times of this because if I observe the statement very carefully if two bees are sitting on each flower implies each bee is sitting on flower twice of y but I have one flower which is left that means I have that subtracted if I take the number of bees the number of bees is 2 times of y minus 1 with one of the flower left over which is subtracted as one from this and then finally I get here continued with this 2y minus 2 which on further simplification gives me x minus 2y equals minus x minus 2y plus 2 equals 0 which is equation 2. Now the question here is how to solve these two equations. We have already discussed on solving of these two equations using the simultaneous elimination method or graphical method where we sketch the line 1 and line 2 and wherever we get the point of intersection of two lines is nothing but the solution of the two lines which is x and y is how we understand. So let's see how we can solve this equation 1 and 2 by elimination method. So let's see the elimination method where I take the two lines. I take the line 1 below the line 2 which is given to be x minus y minus 1 equals 0 which is equation 1 and I subtract the two equations so that the signs change and then this gets cancelled and I get minus 2y plus y is minus y 2 plus 1 is 3 which is equal to 0. And therefore, I get this as y equals 3. So indirectly, I identify that the number of flowers are 3. There are 3 flowers in the garden. And similarly, when I substitute this y in one of the equation 1, say I substitute y equal to 3 in equation 1, then I get the value of x. As I get this, x minus 3 minus 1 equals 0, which is x minus 4 equals 0 minus 3 minus 1. And this is x equal to 4. Therefore, I get the conclusion that there are 4 bees and 3 flowers in the garden which satisfy the two conditions, the condition 1 and the condition 2 given in the statement. The condition 1 and the condition 2 given in the statement. Therefore, 
number of bees in the garden is 4 and number of flowers in the garden is 3 which solve the given problem is how we understand the linear equations in real life situations. So any problem given in the word form we just examine that carefully then convert that into a linear form and then simplify and find the solutions of the two lines either by the algebraic approach or the graphical method which we have already discussed in the previous sessions and then finally those values of x and y will conclude the answers. Now let's see as a recap on finding the solution of linear equations which we have seen in various methods. We have seen the elimination method and we have seen the graphical method of finding the solution of the given linear equations in two variables x and y. Now basically we have three different ways of finding the solution of linear equations. The solution of linear equations in x and y or in two variables is done in three different methods which can be used in the branch of mathematics. The first method is the substitution method in which we substitute the value of x in y or y in x from one of the equation to the other equation and then we reduce one of the equation into one variable and then find that variable by taking all the variables to one side and constants to the other side. So let's see in detail but initially one of the way of finding the solution of linear equations is substitution method. Secondly it's about elimination method which we have already done in many of the problems. This is one of the most famous method of choosing and finding because this doesn't have any restrictions. The easiest method of all. Then finally I have the graphical method through which I can find the solutions of linear equations. So these are the three methods which help us in finding the solutions of linear equations. So how do we do each one of them? Say for example I want to use the substitution method my step one is that substitute x and y, x or y from equation 1 to 2 or 2 to 1, from L1 to L2 or L2 to L1 is how we understand the substitution method. Secondly, for elimination method, we see that we make initially the coefficients of x or y to be same. So make the coefficients of x or y equal. So once we make the coefficients of x or y equal, then eliminate the equal coefficients and then eliminate by either adding or subtracting and then we get the other equation is how we understand the elimination method. Thirdly, in the graphical method, we try to sketch the lines L1 and L2 and find the point of intersection. Now thirdly, for the graphical method, graph the lines L1 and L2 and then find their point of intersection. This is how we try to use the three basic methods in finding the point of intersection or the values x and y or the solution of linear equation. So we have the choice to use any method until and unless mentioned that this specific method has to be used. We can have the freedom of using any of the method which we have out here. But one of the most basic method is the elimination method because this helps us in solving for any problems. 
So let's see each of them individually on how substitution method can be used to start with.